The previous lectures were more difficult. Here we will go through a couple of functions that are straightforward to use, namely rows and columns. They are not a nightmare, but sometimes you might run into one if you didn't know they existed. So let's get started. Here we have the same table that we've already seen several times. Rows counts the number of rows in any given array. It's that simple. And it is not a problem if the array is made up of a single cell, a whole row, or a single column. For example, if I type rows and choose an array from B4 to I4, I should obtain 1. Great. So it works OK. If I type B4 to B8 instead, Excel will count the number of rows we have in that range and will obtain 5. The reasoning behind this function is when you have to create a new table that is relatively large, you will need the row number to change according to a rule. Let me illustrate what I mean with a very simple example. Rows can be used as a counter. The starting point must be cell B5, anchored to its row number, and the array must continue to B5 again. Sounds strange? It actually isn't. It is just a neat, logical trick. Now I can copy this formula and paste it to the three cells below. Let's go back and see what happened. How did Excel guess I want to see 2 written here? Well, from B5 to B6, we have two rows. OK, here the array includes an additional cell, and the number becomes 3. We've fixed the starting point, but the range continues to expand downwards. Of course, we can do the same for columns. To make a long story short, this function works precisely the same way as rows, but it counts cells along the horizontal axis. This means if I equalize this cell to the columns from B5 to I5, I will see 1, 2, 3, 8. Yes, that's correct. What if I specify a one column range instead? spread along the vertical axis. I get 1, which is what we expected, right? It's not a secret that columns could be used as a counter too. The logic is identical, only this time I will fix the column reference. When I drag this formula to the right, I obtain consecutive numbers. As you saw, rows and columns function in the same way. They simply refer either to the vertical or the horizontal orientation of the cells on a worksheet. All right, so far so good. Let's use columns within a VLOOKUP function and see how this can help us. The information in this cell will be our lookup value and the entire table will be our array. Good. Here is what we will do differently in this example. The column number will be determined by the columns function, whose array initiates from the top left corner of the lookup array, namely cell B4, and it continues to the right until it stops at company D, which would be cell F4 in our case. Don't forget that B4 must be anchored. All right. Then we will need to indicate that we are looking for an exact match. Once we've done that, we can press Enter. Let's see if the function worked correctly. Yes, it did. How so? Because the columns function comprised of five horizontally adjacent cells, and thus produced five as an output. What if I paste this formula to the right? Will it work? Let's see what happens. The columns function produced the number 6. The sixth column in our lookup array refers to company E. 
Therefore, if we pasted the same formula to the row below, we should expect to see 1 and 6, right? Perfect. This is how you can use columns and rows as a counter in lookup functions. Thank you for watching.